I almost have Randa Salina, by the way. <laughs> In five minutes, I want to tell you how you can run 100 miles in just about 20 hours. Here's me doing it uh, just a few years ago. Uh, any race over a marathon distance is called an ultra, so I'll be using that language of ultra. Let me get something very clear. If you like eating all the time, if you like uh, dazing off into the distance, if you like uh, getting up, staying up really, really late, and if you like pissing and crapping anywhere you happen to be, ultra running's for you. There's a lot of reasons why you should run ultras. Here's, uh, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. There's some money involved. Uh, it actually hurts a little bit. I don't know if you believe that, but um, here's why I do it. I get to spend most of my day in front of a computer screen. And then when I get done with my computer screen, I play on my phone. And then on my way home, I see billboards. And I'm in meetings with people all day, and I get home and I'm, I'm doing chores. This is a way to get away from it all. Listen to that. After you run 30 miles, it becomes very quiet. Everything stops. Your mind slows down. So it's not all fun and games, by the way. I know what you were thinking. This must be really easy. This must be really uh, fun. Here is what you might expect during an ultramarathon. Uh, there's thunderstorms, tornadoes, uh, big rocks, skunks. That's, a, that's the nicest picture I could find. Um, I had about 20 blisters the last time I ran 100 miles. Uh, I, around mile 80, I had to uh, take a Band-Aid off one blister and put it on another. <laughs> you lose some toenails. By the way, I was going to show a picture of me pulling off my toenail, and I decided not to. It just happens. It just comes with the game. What do you do? There's a little bit of pain involved with running ultras, but not too much. Uh, after running 100 miles, your body gets a little upset. It doesn't hurt too much during it, but it gets a little upset afterward. The hardest part of running 100 miles, the most painful part, is waking up the next day. So uh, it's not too hard. All you have to do is follow these five simple steps, and you'll be able to run an ultra marathon by the end of this year. Here's uh, step number one. Guaranteed. 10 seconds. All right, here we go. Number one, get a mentor. Uh, this is not rocket science, but it can be dangerous. Get a mentor. Find someone who's done it before you. There's a thousand little tips and tricks. Find people who've done it. Run with them. For me, it was Scott Hill. It was a guy named Adam Monahan. I just ran with him. Two, get the gear. You don't have to buy every contraption for running, but make sure you get some good shoes. Get yourself a backpack. Get yourself a GPS. Get yourself a really good headlamp with a long battery life. <laughs> Another thing you need to figure out how to do is eat a lot while you run. You need to be able to eat anything. You need to eat up to 400 calories an hour. When you're running an ultra, that's what? 10,000 calories? I'm not even sure. I eat peanut butter and jelly, pizza. I eat uh, jelly beans, anything. Uh, step four. This one's a silly one, but I think it's important because it's actually dangerous. You gotta run around water. Coming close to running on water and you're out in the middle of nowhere can kill you. And then the simple one, the easiest step, just run endlessly. Uh, an hour plus a day, maybe six to eight hours on the weekend. Um, it's, it's not too hard. All you have to do is run. Uh, here's some t simple tips. Here's some simple tips you have to do. Get used to exhaustion. Start running at 10 p.m. at night and don't get done until 4. That's one little tip. Uh, or start running at 3 in the morning and get done at 9. That's not a big deal, right? Just get used to the idea of being exhausted. Here's a simple tip as well. Uh, get, look at the color of your pee. You want that good Coors Light pee. It's not good for drinking, but it's really good for uh, running. This is a good indicator for knowing whether your body is on the right track. Run slower than you think you can and take a lot of breaks. There are much better runners out there uh, who are much faster than me who dropped out of races. And it's because they went out too fast. It's running slow, it's preserving yourself. Ultimately, I'm not gonna give a pitch that tells you how or why you should run 100 miles or why you should join ultras. That may not be for you. 
What I will tell you is that there is something about doing something scary, about doing something that you're not sure whether it's possible for you. Within this place, within this space of doing something scary, you learn something about yourself. You get into this place of, of feeling emotions that you didn't know existed, and you create profound experiences that you'll never forget. Thank you.